Hey everyone, it's uh, Scott Norris here. Uh, just continuing on for in our uh, series for, of Blueprinting 101. Uh, so today I thought I'd dive into Cloud Init. So if you want to know how to, the syntax and all everything Cloud Init, uh, there's obviously, uh, just Google it. Uh, it's a, a service that's run and now it, it runs the same across AWS, Azure, uh, on vSphere supports it as well. And it's a really simple way to be able to bootstrap your devices. Um, that you deploy. So if you want to, you know, bootstrap and run Puppet, if you want to maybe, you, know, you can even run Ansible, you want to run some scripts, you want to, you know, copy things from Git, you know, it's all these little things. You want to create users, you want to create groups, uh, anything that you want available, you know, at runtime essentially. So how we do this in VRA is that we select our machine. Uh, so here's our machine here. And then we want to use the um, property which is uh, cloud config. So cloud config here. And then we pipe that out and we go to the next line indent, obviously being YAML. So here we can use, essentially it's just native cloud init uh, capabilities. So there's lots of different things you can run uh, packages. So it can, it can take things like, um, you know, packages and you just list the packages that you want. Uh, you know, I could list, you know, Node.js and I want Nano and I want this and I want that, whatever it might be. Uh, and it will install that. So it's got a bit of a, a descriptive language to it as well. But a lot of, uh, a lot of the time I find I write my own scripts for it. Um, or I create users and whatnot. So I'm just going to do something very simple here and let's just create a user. So I'm going to use the users um, part of oh, cloud in it. Uh, and then from here, I want to set uh, default. Now again, you can um, look these up and there's lots and lots of scripts online. Uh, do name. And what I'm going to do is actually use the um, input that we already used here on our one-on-one -on -one script. So I've got that username there, right? So let's create that username. So I'll, I'll use the dollar sign uh, input dot username. There it is. So I can pass those values into uh, my cloud init as well. Uh, I'll do uh, lock password I think it is password is false so this is basically saying don't you know uh, leave the password active um, we can put our pseudo rules in here so again pseudo um, I'll do all now again these are all available online um, now I wouldn't obviously do what I'm putting here I'm just making sure everything works. Uh, it's not exactly uh, secure by any stretch. Uh, then we go groups. So we add this user into the groups and I'll put it in the pseudo group. Uh, we give what's the shell for this user. Uh, so let's do bin bash. And we can put an authorized keys here. So since I can't remember my actually authorized keys, let's just copy and paste one in there is what I prepared earlier yep cool so that's all available and that's it so I could use this to uh, create a user so let's just quickly spin this out uh, let's do a deploy we'll do uh, test user that in it Blueprint version, current draft, uh, and there's all the inputs. So I'll just do a local, CentOS, username. So let's do test user123, uh, as an example, and give it a password of password and backups now. So let's just deploy that. All right, hopefully that goes off. So what we'll also do is let's have a look at this a bit more. So this is creating a user and this is using the out of the box user um, config out of cloud in it. But maybe I want to do uh, something else. So let's, let's go down here and I want to go back out and let's do 
um, run CMD. So this is what I find I run most of the time, right? So in this one, it's basically a list of all the commands that you want to run. Uh, and it does it line by line, and if you change directories, that's the directory that it's now running in. So, for instance, I could do uh, sudo uh, yum install git slash s. Uh, as a, an example, I could do sudo um, uh, curl silent application https rpm node source.com slash setup ah setup 10.x and sudo bash uh, then I might do a uh, uh, yeah, sudo yeah, install uh, node JS. Yes, and then I could do a sudo uh, make directory temp workspace. And then I could do sudo git clone cps.com So, as long as I haven't made any typos there, that will then run our commands, and it'll run them in order uh, going this way. So let's have a quick look at uh, that machine. So let's drag this over. resizing there we go let's have a look at this one which is almost finished now this should be let's go back to deployments let's make sure cloud machine so it's 2154 so 2154 yep okay it's got its IP address so let's connect with that test user 123 uh, and that SSH key that I put in. Um, let's close that and let's putty. Oh, still got that copy. And probably been quicker to type that, but that's okay. Auth, let's browse for a key pair there they used connect yep all right so it should be test user one two three done um so i should be in the sudo as group two but i can um yep all right cool So that worked just like it should have. Now let's actually, let's now run, let's do another one uh, and see how that goes. So let's close this. Now we've got this new capability here. Hopefully it does all that. So let's now do um, command test cloud in it. Let's have a look at current draft inputs. Again, I'll finish all these out. CentOS 
username. So let's choose another user this time. Let's go demo user one, two, three, four. Um, and we give a password and we deploy. All right. So let's wait until that's done. Okay, so that's now ready, 171. So let's um, connect to this one and look at my key. All right, so what was it demo user one, two, three, four? I think. Hey, works, cool. Okay, so now we go. Uh... All right. So that looks to have um, downloaded. Let's just have a quick look at um, the output. So if we go cat um, uh, log um, cloud in it. Permission to nine. Awesome. Uh, All right, um, uh, cloud in an output I need, which actually isn't part of the rel 7.5. Uh, so we need to look here. All right, so we can see that given all the IPs, we can see that I've gotten the git, the sudo git's been run. Uh, it's done all that. Installed packages complete, nothing to do. Temp workspace, uh, so cloning into temp workspace, which is the git, um, and yeah, done. So that is everything as it's expected to be which is always good. First time, I thought it might uh, take a couple of times to do that. But we can now go and look, actually look on here, on this cloud machine, once it's done, and we can actually have a look at the cloud config uh, and what's been run on that machine. So you can always go back and actually have a look at what's actually been executed on this machine, or what was attempted to be executed, because obviously you can't guarantee it fully worked, because there could be errors in there, or fat fingers, um, uh, if you will. And that's it. So that's a, a very simple way to do cloud init. Uh, now, look, cloud init works across both Linux and Windows machines. It's actually called cloud, cloud base image for Windows, and it does work. I've done it before. Um, it's typically been a, a Linux uh, world thing uh, that you would do. Now, look, this is something that you run at the beginning um of the mach of a machine and this is something how you can you can start executing your the installs you can communicate with your um if you don't want to use the other box uh, ansible and puppet you can actually trigger those to run as well uh you know you can do what i did you get clone you create users you set it all up for the end consumer to be able to use so you know you can change the password of the root account on deployment um, reaching out into secret server or something equivalent so there's lots of different things that you could do um, in cloud in it uh, whether it's actually building out an app or whether it's just the operations team making sure that that's available now one thing to notice i'll actually touch on as well while we've done this within the um uh, within the actual blueprint you can also if we go to infrastructure and uh, image mappings. So when you're here in the image mappings, you can actually edit these cloud configs. So see, I've got one here in AWS already. So this one is actually setting up a username CentOS and giving it the same SSH key that I wanted with all the access, right? 
So the great thing about this is that people consuming this image cannot override this. Um, so this is a way for the infrastructure teams or whoever's offering up these base images to make sure the image is set up specifically for the organization's requirements, uh, that the security, the firewall, everything's enabled, all that sort of stuff. So you can go in here and actually set up what you want to run at execution time. If someone puts cloud in it within a blueprint, it gets added onto this, but they cannot override this in any way. So that's one way you can actually put all of your, you know, uh, access and requirements and security and all that in part of the guest OS if that's what you want it to do. All right, on that note, this uh, video is over and tune back next time and I'll start t uh, touching on how we do operators and uh, ternary operators and logic within the actual blueprint itself. Cheers, bye.